Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living or retirement worth having. When I'm sitting in the early hours, I'm listening to a lot of people talk at me and chat at me and openly have a lot of people in a lot of power who need a lot of response from me. And I'm humbled for that because at this time I'm still not making a salary. But what they've asked me to talk about is how to be tainted. How do people get tainted? What happens when they're tainted? Well, it's pretty simple. It really doesn't take a long explanation. And I can orate about my life and explain about my late wife and do all those things. But the truth is, you just want to know how to be tainted. Being tainted is when you get this inspiration from God. And it's loving and kind to help someone in some way. To serve them in some way. And basically what happens is you have to ask God in that moment, are you hearing him correctly for the day? And what happens is sometimes we utter that idea that we have of helping someone out loud. Or we sort of ask someone's opinion about what we might like to do only because we are looking for validation of what God might like to, for you and me to do. But here's the problem. That person is not God. And it's very difficult not to be tainted by their conversation, by their attitude, by their opinion, by their feelings, by their beliefs that may not be of God. So when I'm talking about being tainted, I can even have a loving kindness idea because I just care for people. And I have people who've been really bad to me and I still want to help them in some way. And God says, nope, sorry, they insulted you. Nope, sorry, you can forgive them, but we're not doing that today. And that's different. But when I literally ask the Lord about something, he answers me. Does he answer you? Being tainted is really being, being disciplined in your faith and finding other ways to ask the angels around you. The Holy Ghost is talked about in almost every aspect of the New Testament and probably in the Old Testament too, but I'm not as good with that, is that you really have to understand that even a pagan knows those works. And sometimes it's easy easier to talk to Christian pastors, talking them from their works, as opposed to the books that I love that are pagan. Because most of them have been too lazy to read them. Now, I have a pretty good library. I love to read. Religion is one of my hobbies. Absolutely. But it's also a practice of my faith to be as smart as I can about what I'm doing in my life and make sure I'm leading my life in the way that's correct with God, whether I have no money or not. So for me, I don't want to be tainted. If I want your opinion, I'll ask it, but I don't need you to render an opinion on my life if I didn't ask for it. And part of it is my attitude, not at all. Part of it is my age. I am very seasoned. I'm very experienced. I ran a business for a long time. I did a lot of public networking. I did a lot of events um, in my life, and I don't really always need your opinion, especially if I know there's somebody who's more marvelous about the topic, the industry, the career path, the profession, the opportunity, than you.